Hey, Spooky Sooner here. Um, if you like the content that you've seen so far, uh, think about joining my Patreon, where I'm going to have the videos that you've already seen, some scripts, um, and some art that I use for the videos that you can download. So if you're interested and want to see more, join me at Spooky Sooner on Patreon. Thanks and enjoy the show. Teki Teki is a Japanese urban legend, a ghostly creature that is said to haunt the country's train stations, schools, and other public places. According to the legend, Teki Teki was the spirit of a young woman who had been cut in half by a train. She was said to crawl around on her hands and knees, dragging her upper torso along the ground and emitting a chilling cry that sounded like Teki Teki. Many people had claimed to have seen her, a woman who was sliced in half at the waist, dragging her upper body along the ground while wielding a sharp scythe. Most people dismiss the legend as myth or an urban legend, but there were some who claimed to have encountered her. They described her as a beautiful young woman with long black hair, dressed in a white school uniform. Upon further inspection, they noticed her lower half was missing, and in its place was a gruesome stump that oozed blood. The story behind her gruesome appearance varies from person to person. Some do believe that she is a victim of a freak accident, while others believe that she was attacked and her vengeful spirit seeks retribution. However, one thing is for certain. If you encounter her, she would hunt you down, and the only way to escape her wrath is to outrun her. One such person was a young girl named Yuki. Yuki was a quiet, introverted child who was often bullied at school. She had few friends and spent most of her time alone, reading books and drawing in her sketchbook. One day, as Yuki was leaving school, she saw something out of the corner of her eye. It was a shadowy figure crawling along the ground, making a strange sound. Yuki turned to look and saw Teki Teki for the first time. She froze in terror unable to move as the ghostly creature approached her. Teki Teki's eyes glowed with a sinister light, and her mouth opened wide, emitting a bone-chilling scream. Yuki tried to run, but her legs wouldn't move. She felt as though she was rooted to the spot. Just as Teki Teki was about to reach her, a group of schoolboys appeared, shouting and laughing. Teki Teki vanished into thin air, leaving Yuki shaken but unharmed. From that day on, Yuki became obsessed with the legend of Teki Teki. She read every book and article she could find on the subject, and even started writing her own stories about the creature. She became convinced that Teki Teki was real, and that she had a message to deliver. Yuki's parents grew concerned about her daughter's obsession, and tried to talk to her about it. But Yuki was convinced that she was on a mission, and nothing would sway her. One night, Yuki had a dream. In the dream, she was walking along a deserted train platform when she heard the sound of Teki Teki's cry. She turned to see the ghostly creature crawling towards her, her eyes glowing with an unearthly light. Yuki tried to run, but her legs wouldn't move. Teki Teki came closer and closer until she was right in front of Yuki. She reached out with her bloody stump and touched Yuki's forehead. At that moment, Yuki woke up, her heart racing. She knew that the dream was a message, but she wasn't sure what it meant. The next day, Yuki went to school as usual. She was walking through the corridors when she heard a cry that made her blood run cold. It was the sound of Teki Teki. Yuki turned around and saw the ghostly creature crawling towards her. She tried to run, but her legs wouldn't move. Teki Teki came closer and closer until she was right in front of Yuki. Yuki closed her eyes, waiting for the worst, but instead of attacking her, Teki Teki spoke. Her voice was soft and gentle, and she spoke in a language that Yuki didn't understand. Yuki opened her eyes and saw that Teki Teki was holding out a book. It was a sketchbook, just like the one that Yuki carried around with her everywhere. 
Tekiteki respected Yuki's desire to learn what happened to her, and Yuki respected Tekiteki. They both agreed with their eyes and went their separate ways. Yuki was lucky in the situation, but some are not so lucky. Takumi was a young man who had heard of the legend of Tekiteki from his friends. They had told him to avoid dark alleys and secluded places at night, as that was where she often lurked. However, he had never taken their warning seriously, dismissing it as just another silly ghost story. One night, Takumi found himself walking home alone after a late night shift at work. It was past midnight, and the streets were quiet and deserted. As he turned a corner, he caught a glimpse of a figure in the distance. It was a woman, dragging her upper body along the ground, wielding a scythe in her hand. Takumi froze in fear, realizing that he was face to face with the infamous Teki Teki. He could hear her sharp scythe scraping the ground as she closed in on him. Takumi turned around and sprinted as fast as he could, trying to outrun her. However, he could feel her hot breath on his neck, and at that moment, her scythe narrowly missed him, with multiple swipes attempted on his neck. Takumi's heart was pounding in his chest as he raced through the streets, hoping to find some refuge. As he turned another corner, he saw a faint light in the distance, and he knew that was his only hope. He ran towards it with all his might, not daring to look back. The light grew brighter, and he could see that it was a train station. Takumi raced towards the platform, and as he reached it, he stumbled and fell onto the tracks. Teki Teki had caught up with him, and she stood over him, wielding her scythe. Takumi closed his eyes, bracing himself for the final blow. However, to his surprise, he heard the sound of a train approaching. The train was coming at full speed and Takumi knew he had to get up and run. However, his legs wouldn't move, and he was stuck there. It's like his legs were paralyzed. Suddenly, he regained the use of his legs, and he scrambled to his feet, racing towards the end of the platform. Teki Teki was right behind him, and he could feel her breath on his neck. As he reached the end of the platform, Takumi took a leap of faith, jumping to the opposite tracks as the train rushed towards him. He landed on the opposite platform, rolling and tumbling to a stop. The train whizzed past him, and he could feel the heat as it zoomed past. Takumi lay there for a moment, catching his breath, and waiting for the adrenaline to subside. When he finally looked up, he saw that Teki Teki was gone. She had disappeared, leaving him alone on the empty platform. Takumi never believed in ghosts before. But his experience had changed him. He knew that he had narrowly escaped death, and it had been thanks to his quick reflexes and timely arrival of the train. He left the station, walking back to his apartment with his shaky legs. At least they worked, though. The fear of Teki Teki lingered in his mind, and he knew he would never forget his experience. From that day on, he avoided walking alone at night, always taking a taxi or a bus instead. A few months later, Takumi had let it go and finally got on a train. Everything seemed to be going fine, until the train's electricity seemed to be flickering. Then the lights went out. The train started suddenly picking up a considerable amount of speed. The other passengers were all looking terrified. They were all terrified because of him. He brought Teki Teki to this train. The train hit a rough spot and derailed in a disastrous display of carnage. While suspended in the air, with an extremely high potential of complete and total dismemberment, Teki Teki appeared in front of Takumi and cut him in two with the scythe. Teki Teki came back for him, and he took everyone else on the train with him. You can't escape death when it decides it's your turn. Just accept your fate, and don't bring everybody else with you. Hey, Spooky Sooner here. Uh, We're at 310 subscribers, so thanks everybody for that. 
Uh, I mentioned Patreon at the beginning. Uh, Patreon, you can get um, some scripts for my stories. You can uh, see some AI artwork that's used to make the stories. And uh, my videos are also posted there. Um, you can also link up with me. You can talk to me about stories that you want to see, uh, what you're interested in. Uh, we're going to try and build a community over there. So, um, If you guys like scary music videos, I also have those available. If you just like to go to sleep and listen to these kind of stories, uh, feel free to listen to the Scary Stories for Sleep uh, 1 through 7. It is on a playlist, so you can just play that and it doesn't have any extra banter or uh, outtakes. Hey, I'm trying some new music out for this video by Tim Kulig. Uh, I hope I said that right. Uh, he reached out to me. Um, it was pretty cool. I was using the music in the videos. He's making content for people to use on YouTube. So, yeah, for this I used Forest Ambiance, Irregular Rhythms, New You in Another Life, Never Go in the Attic, and Simple TikTok Horror Bed. You can find this at pixabay.com slash music and then search for Tim Kulig. That is K-U-L-I-G. Thanks, Tim. So I'm not sure what I want to write yet, but uh, I think we might be doing California and or Tennessee haunted places, at least for some ideas. Um, and then one more thing. Um, I did think about doing some Reddit stories. So would you guys be interested in no sleep Reddit stories or let's not meet? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you and stay spooky. Many people have claimed to see her. A woman who was sliced in half at the waist, dragging her upper body along the ground while wielding a sharp sith. A sith. Sith. Sharp sith. S Y T H E. Hold on. How do I pronounce it? The story. The. The. However, he had never taken their warring ser. Uh, it was past midnight and the streets were quiet and deserted. It was past midnight, and the streets were quiet and deserted. <laughs> he could hear her sharp scythe scraping the ground as she closed in on him. He could, he, could, <clears throat> he could hear her sharp scythe scraping the... He could hear her sharp... sharp and he knew it was only hope it was only hope. What am I saying? Oh, I got it. With an extremely high potential of a complete and total dismemberment. <laughs>